Reliable, consistent, and predictable server deployment environments can utilize which of the following to reduce the risk of patching and modifying a live production system. Is it choice A, change management? Is it choice B, immutable architecture? Is it choice C, infrastructure as code? Or is it choice D, virtualization? Wow, this question is a lot to take in. Lots of key words and technologies to keep a track of. Just like the questions and choices on the real exam, take your time to first analyze the choices fully, look at the question again, look at your choices again, then make your choice. Oh, before we begin, just want to say that if your cat is nearby, tell him I said pss, 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 pss. <laughs> Even if you're unsure about the meaning of one of the choices, you still may be able to pick the right choice by eliminating the other choices. The correct choice will be reliable, it will be consistent, it will be predictable, and it will reduce the risk of making changes to a server while it is in a live production environment. To make it easier on yourself, first look to convince yourself of a choice that not only reduces the risk of live changes, but eliminates it completely. See if you can do that first. Because in some way, all the changes can be configured and functional to be reliable, consistent, and predictable. But only one choice will reduce the risk of patching, hotfixes, or any other changes while a system is generating revenue for a company. Let's look at choice A. Does change management reduce the risk of patching and modifications to a live system? While the definition of change management is that it is needed in environments with constant changes, because the reason for change management is to reduce the risk of errors and mistakes from system changes. An environment with a lot of changes means there is a lot of room for mistakes during those changes. Though change management does an excellent job of proper planning, approval, execution, and if necessary, a rollback of changes, it does not prevent the need for constant scheduled maintenance to the same system. You could say that change management does reduce risk because it reduces mistakes, which in turn reduces more changes, but keep your focus on the point of the question. If you start to go into a world of what ifs and but in my experience and I've never seen that in my 20 years of, you're then getting out of scope of the question. Just ask Joe Barnes from TrainingCamp.com, one of the best CSP instructors I know. If you have Joe as your CSP instructor, you're almost guaranteed to become a sys. He'll never admit that and actually no self-respecting CSP instructor ever will admit that either. But the numbers don't lie as far as students who pass after attending his boot camp. Joe will tell you, keep your scope within the question. Just give the question what it's asking. Don't let your thoughts spiral out of control with other possibilities and whatabouts. This question is specifically looking for something that eliminates the need to constantly come to the rescue of live systems that require midstream maintenance. What about choice B, immutable architecture? The definition from the Cybex book I'm about to give you verbatim should say it all. An immutable server architecture is the concept that a server never changes once it is deployed. I was flipping through the Cybex book casually the other day and flipped to this page and I'm like, whoa, what is this? I've never seen that topic before. You know, e even though I feel like I've read this book like, I don't know, 600 times, there's always, just always something new I pick up, without fail. That's why the CSP exam is so frustrating. It feels like you're never ready and there's always just one more thing to learn because it seems new or you forgot it already. Well, after being in the security field for eight years, I can tell you that it's the same way in the real world when you work with direct security. Everything changes every day and you're always having to read some new technical manual or NIST document or learn some new framework or understand some new regulation or have to work with a new type of concept like like art like you know zero trust architecture or something it's 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 endless so make sure you get paid a lot of money to be in cybersecurity otherwise you're just cheating yourself you have to get paid for all this extra self study you're putting in after your job or before you know 9 to 5 is when you get paid for your job but all the work you do before that and after that no one's paying you for that you got to make sure someone pays you in your next job in your salary negotiation 
All right, getting out of scope. Speaking of getting out of scope, I'm getting out of scope. If you haven't guessed by now, choice B is the correct answer. In an immutable architecture, if there is a need to, to apply a patch or make a change to a server, the server itself is first cloned or copied. The new one is then fully put into production with approval, most likely from a change management process. And once all that is working, then the original server is decommissioned. There are no changes to the current server. There are no ongoing or constantly scheduled maintenance to the server. No, no patching cycles. This way you know the new server won't suffer from the changes made before it. It's a brand new server with a brand new update this, each time. It's still the same configuration as before, but with added modification. The configuration is the same, but the instance of the server itself, whether physical or virtual, is new. If a server needs a change, as I said before, it is cloned, the changes are applied, the new clone server is deployed, once it is working as expected, the old server is decommissioned. That's the process. And I'm sure you can guess where this is most popular. That's right, the cloud, where you can turn off virtual machines, clone virtual machines, spin up new machines, all done because of the oh so important concept of thinking like a manager and reducing cost and increasing efficiency. If you were to do this at a physical company with physical servers, well then the cost is going to go up. No way your accounting department is going to give approval to buy new servers each time. At least you better hope that's not the case or your salary and yearly bonus is going to be a lot smaller. <laughs> I remember at a meeting one time we were discussing something about getting used IBM GX firewalls or something like that. And I remember joking and telling my director of IT that, hey, I'd rather save the company money on its assets instead of my salary. Don't, don't try to save money on my salary. Save money on your infrastructure instead. I'm all down for that. All right, just to complete the video, what's infrastructure as code? You can liken infrastructure as code to the concept of DevOps. You are writing code to change physical or cloud infrastructure. Instead of going to your checkpoint firewall and clicking multiple buttons and pushing policy to set up your interfaces like we see in this checkpoint dashboard here, the engineers in your company using infrastructure as code will write a script that will do that for you. The advantage being that you can reuse this very code again and again, that's the key. Instead of having to constantly update the web console every time there's a change to the firewall's interface. And choice D, virtualization, well, that's just creating VMs managing hypervisors, allocating RAM or CPU to AWS instances, it's, it's all a part of cloud computing. Virtualization is cloud computing. You could have easily eliminated choice D because it is too broad of an answer and doesn't make sense for this question. And don't try to make this make sense as the correct answer either. Remember what Joe Barnes says, give the question the answer it is looking for. Stay within the environment of this question and don't start taking your mind to the stratosphere. Choice D could have been easily eliminated, leaving you with only the safety of picking choices A, B, and C. Look, this entire question exists to see if you knew the advantages and purpose of the definition of an immutable server architecture. Choice D was easy to eliminate, but choices A, B, and C required you, you know them fully and know how they affect continuous organizational changes. Good luck with your exam. I know you're studying hard. I know you are. I see your emails. I see your messages. I see all your comments. Keep at it because I guarantee you it's going to pay off. Hard work will always pay off. You may not know how, when, why, or which way it will pay off, but it will always pay off. I wish you all the best on your CSP exam, especially those who are taking it for the second, third, or even fourth time. Thanks for watching.